and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at naming alkanes. First we're going to start by looking at the names of the basic alkanes. The first alkane is methane. This has the formula CH4. The second alkane is ethane with the formula C2H6. We then have propane which is C3H8, butane C4H10, pentane, C5H12, hexane, C6H14, heptane, C7H16, and octane, C8H18. It's important that you're familiar with these names and the number of carbons associated with them as all of the naming in the alkanes will be based on these names, including that for branches. When we go on to look at the alkenes, the names are also based on similar structure, using the same prefixes that we see here. When we're trying to name branched chain alkenes, we have specific rules that need to be followed. The first rule is to find the longest continuous chain of carbons, and this will be the base of the name. We then number the chain from the end closest to the branch, we can then name the branches based on what they would be if they were alkanes, but instead of having ane on the end, we have ile. The branches are then added to the base of the name in alphabetical order, with the corresponding carbon number. If you have multiple branches of the same type, then you need to use the prefixes di and tri, but these do not interfere with the alphabetical aspect of the branches. Let's look at an example. Here we have a branch chain alkane. So the first thing we need to do is find the longest continuous chain of carbons. So we can count here, one, two, three. You want to find the longest chain where you don't lift your pen or your finger off the page. I'm going to draw a box around these three carbons here. This will be the base of the name. If this branch here didn't exist, then we would just call this propane. We're then going to number the chain from the end closest to the branch. As this one's symmetrical, it doesn't matter which end we choose. So we have one, two, three. We can see that on the second carbon, we have a branch. This branch here only has one carbon within it. If this was a molecule by itself, it would be methane. But as it's a branch, we change the end of the name to ile. So we have methyl. We can then put this together. So on the second carbon, we have a methyl group and it's attached to propane. So this molecule is called 2-methylpropane instead of butane, which it would be if it was in a straight line. Let's look at another example. We need to find the longest continuous chain of carbons. So here we have five carbons in a row, but we can also have five going this way or this way. We're going to put a box around the longest chain and we're going to name that has five carbons so it'll be called pentane. We're then going to number these carbons from the end closest to the branch and again it's symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way we number them. We're then going to put a box around our branch. We can see that this branch has two carbons within it. If this was a molecule by itself it would be called ethane. Since it's a branch we change it to ile. So on carbon number three we have an ethyl branch and it's attached to pentane. In this example here, we need to be careful when we're counting our longest chain. It's not always the most obvious one. As we can see here, if we go up the way, we can get a chain of five. So instead of being in a straight line, our chain is in an L shape. We've got five carbons, so this would be called pentane. We then need to number from the end closest to one of the branches. This is a symmetrical molecule again, so we can number either way. We then have this branch here, which has one carbon, so it's a methyl branch. Putting the name together, on the third carbon, we have a methyl branch attached to pentane. In this example here, we need to find our longest chain, so through the middle, we have a chain of six. If we count up this way, we also have a chain of six. 
And if we count this way, we also have a chain of six and also in this direction. So our longest one is going to be the chain of six. So we can go for the one through the middle. On its own, that would be called hexane. We're then going to number from the end closest to the branch. We can see that that is from the left hand side. So we're going to number and we keep numbering all the way to the end. This branch here only has one carbon, so it's a methyl branch. This branch up here has two carbons in it, so it's an ethyl branch. We need to name this so that these come alphabetically. So even though this ethyl is on a higher number, it needs to come first. So on carbon number four, we have an ethyl branch. And then on carbon number two, we have a methyl branch and they are both attached to a hexane chain. In this example, we have our longest chain through the middle and it has four carbons. So that's butane. We're then going to number from the end closest to the branch and we can look at our branches and you can see that the two branches are of the same type. So they're both methyl branches. They're both attached to number two, but we have to put in both numbers so that we know where each of the methyls are. We're then going to use a prefix di to show that we have two of them, followed by the name of the branch, which is methyl. They're both then attached to butane. Pause the video now and try and name these alkenes. First step is always to find your longest chain. So the longest chain for this one is four carbons. We put a box around that and we name that. So that is butane. We then number from the end closest to the branch, which is the left hand side for this one. And then we can look at the branch itself, which has one carbon. So it's a methyl branch. The methyl is on number two. And it is attached to a butane chain. For this one here, whichever way you count it, you have a longest chain of four. So our longest chain will take to be through the middle, which is butane. And then we can number it from either side because it is symmetrical. And we can look at our branches. Both branches are of the same type. They've both got one carbon, so they are a methyl. Now we have one of them on number two and one of them on number three. So we need to include both numbers. So we're gonna have two, three. We've got two methyls, so we need to write in di, then methyl, and they're both attached to butane. In this third example, our longest chain can be seen here through the middle. You could also count it this way as well if you wanted, or across the way. So our longest chain has five carbons, which is pentane, and then we need to number. So you want to go from the end closest to one of the branches, but this one is also symmetrical, so we can number from either side. And at a glance, you can see that all of their branches are of the same type. They've all got one carbon, so they're all methyl branches. We have one on carbon two, one on carbon three, and one on carbon four. So we need to write down all of those numbers. So we have two, three, four, now this time we have three that are the same, so we're going to use the prefix tri. So we have trimethyl, and all three of them are attached to your pentane chain on numbers two, three, and four. This last example is much larger. We can see through the middle that we have a chain of seven. We can also count from this side here, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our longest chain is that chain of seven. If that was on its own, that would be a heptane. We need to number from the end closest to one of the branches. So we can see that this has branches in from two in from each side. So we're going to number from this end, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got one branch here on number three, which has two carbons within it. So that would be an ethyl branch. And then we've got two branches on numbers four and five, which have one carbon each, so they would be methyl branches. We need to make sure that we are writing this out alphabetically, 
so Eb comes before M. The E file is attached to number 3. So we have 3 ethyl. We've then got our methyls attached to number 4 and 5. There are two of them, so we've put in the di, so we have dimethyl. And then that's all attached to a heptane. Now even though we've got a di here, this part still comes after the ethyl because it's the branch itself which is important for the naming. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos throughout the year. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now!